I say we get back to the sea view. We had to skip her for a whole week because we're finishing my movie. So now that the movie is done and Isaac's in there working his butt off, uh, I made a stand. It's a stand that I had uh, because it's, but I added new foam. I, you know, it's amazing about the things you find in a trash can. I went out there the other day and I found this stack of this beautifully reinforced blue foam. Someone was just throwing away a whole bunch of it. It's great because it's blue foam. And, you know, this is nice and sturdy and it stays put and it just, you're going to get so much more work done having something to, to work in suited, customly, customly, suited to your, your model. So, uh, what I want to do is this. I want to cut, probably be helpful if I had some light over here. Oh, look at that. I want to cut these out because we're going to put these in like that and replace the ones we're cutting out with these, which go in here, like so. So, what I have to do first, see? Actually, it's this way. So, what I have to do first, so, 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 is cut these out. And I'm assuming <clears throat> that they, uh, you know, that's the top side, the bottom side, that, well, let's see. I'll be able to tell by placing this inside that the cuts are exactly to the originals, which they appear to be. So what I'm going to do, here we go, cut them out. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go like right ahead of the, I'm going to be outside of the line and then file back. Okay, so the idea here is to do that. Plastic's still kind of hot. And so it's partly cut out and it's not right to the very edge. So now I can get in there and start to, I'll probably use sanding disc on here, which makes very short work of this. Those RPMs are steadily increasing. Now, what I want to do is sand. It's pretty close. I thought, I don't really need to put an apron on today because it's plastic, not balsa wood. And it's amazing just how much of a mess this plastic makes. Mary made me put it on. Yep. Yep, she did. Okay, I need something sort of roundish. Da, 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 da. Wrong. <laughs> Look round to me. Uh, there it is. It's kind of airfoil shaped. This is a stone grinder. Let's get stone. And uh, I should be able to get right in there. Oh yeah. We're pretty close now. I suppose I should check it. Because we're really, it's pretty darn good right now. that. And now, hmm, probably what I want to do is sort of score this to fit to, to this, I think. These will do this eventually, but it's not going in there all the way because we got this little lip here. So very carefully, 
he says knowingly. And then take that down. In fact, I wonder if I shouldn't actually glue this in and match it right to that edge. And this will go up to that. I better double check this and make sure that it will close. See, it snaps together, literally. So now I'm gonna put this back up in here and see. I can tell this is going to be annoying. There is a certain amount of resistance with this piece, but it will glue down all the way. But I'm just checking to see how far back it's going to be. Because if I go ahead and glue this in, right up to the edge and then it doesn't fit in, I'm kind of in trouble. There. There, you honky mofo. So I think the thing to do then is just kind of sneak in the back here. And we'll just run a little bit of CA in there. It's kind of hard to get in there. Once I get it open, I'll be able to glue it all the way around. But I think that's in place now. And so as it turns out, it does kind of go right up to the edge like so. So so now I can go ahead and glue it in the rest of the way. Uh, and I'm probably going to use some thin CA on that. It'll go off a lot, lot quicker. Um, that is if I can find it. It must have uh, gravitated upstairs. So we'll just put some uh, medium around it. Actually, that's pretty good for now. I think I'll move on to the next one. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Uh, I also can now realize and know where this, it being where this goes, that I can grind this part back so it fits in there right. It's pretty close. Let's see if this part now, uh, one. one side is really thin and narrow. I think this is the wrong side. This is the underside. So that's the underside. Hopefully I don't have two rights. <laughs> See, that fits really well now. All the way. See? I think I got this now. See, I didn't do this on mine. Uh, I didn't have these parts. But uh, there we go. They're very smooth, very nice. So that's the one. Now I got to do the other side, and then uh, I'll do that, and then we'll come back and take a look at all that, uh, and then we're going to cut the top side once. So that'll be next. OK, I've got the dive planes working. Uh, they work very nice. I, I, you know, personally, I don't like them because uh, in, in, in the show, you never saw them actually function um, on the sea view. They were always blended perfectly smooth and everything. And this is kind of hard to do. You can't, re if you get them really tight like this, then they, they rub a lot. And there's really not much you can do to stop that. So they have to be a little bit further away, and then they're fine. And then, of course, I'm going to have to do a bit of blending to get them to, to, to fit well. Uh, but they do, I mean, pretty much. I mean, David always does a good job. So uh, I'll flip it over so you can see from underneath what they look like. Uh, you can see the control horns that I'll be hooking to, and these will move like so and move the planes. They'll be hooked together in tandem. So that's pretty well done, and that's going to work out just fine. Uh, the next thing I want to do, of course, is this, which is, uh, which is the sailplanes. Uh, and I figured out pretty much to get these right that I would uh, 
put together this way. I checked to see if there's a right and a left. It doesn't seem that there is. So, and so my thought was, uh, since you really don't know where center is exactly, it would be center between that slot because the actual sail panes, the planes, oh, there we go, spit on it. Um, I can't, I can't move them real far forward because then it doesn't match. So I just move it back until it's right there perfectly. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the other side and put it on and then temporarily and uh, tape it together and match this up. Get those together like that and I'm gonna put some tape on them. Because this way, I know, absolutely. Plus, I gotta put lights in there, so I don't wanna glue this together. I still have to put the lights in and a few other things, but I do wanna get these uh, fairings, or fillets, as we call them in the aviation business, which are like wing fillets, to fit in the right location. And I'll be needing to move this back, like so. Now, of course, what I have to do is I have to, to uh, cut this piece of brass down and get this to fit because that's way too long. So, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them both to fit, make sure they're both level both sides, tack it with a little bit of CA, thin CA, and those should be mounted really clean. Of course, I'll have to fill them with putty and stuff, but not much. I mean, these really, look how well those fit. Typical David Merriman, they just fit to this contour just rather beautifully. Okay, as you can see, I've got both of these located, and uh, they're very straight, and they look very straight looking straight down, too, because they just, they will naturally key. So what I want to do now is make look at the side and make sure that I'll do one at a time. They're level, and that is level. I'm going to take a little bit of little bit of CA and drip it down in there and tack it in position. Still think I need to come a little bit more forward. And I'm using medium CA, so it, it goes off pretty slow. Um, it goes off very slowly because it's, it's the thick stuff. So I think I think I'm locked in. Yes, I am. Now I'm going to do the other one. And what's great about the way I did this is I can just match them up. Lead on. Yeah, perfectly, as a matter of fact. So I do the same thing on this side, and then I'll run a bead of thin CA in there after. Uh, I'm sure that the bearings are out and the shafts are out, and I don't lock them up. Oop, boy, that tried to stick faster. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now, of course, a little more kicker. And you see how they both move. So now we have these. Um, I eventually will close this up, of course, but I have to put the lights inside. Um, and this fits on, let's see. So we go, this goes on here, like so. We have to open up a hole in this so that the uh, air can vent through when the sub actually dives. Okay, it goes like that. This goes underneath here. Uh, I am just tacking this together for a look-see. Boy, that is some serious wind. Again, one has the hatch. I think this is the correct one for the film. I mean, for the, the TV show. I, I can't remember. There's two different sets of these. One has more missiles, or two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18. More missiles. More is always better. For, getting those pesky aliens and things on that show. And we're gonna take this and put this here. 
Okay. See you. So I'll see you tomorrow with more uh, progress and fun with the sea view. As promised, we're back at Voyager. No, Discovery. No, Sea View. We're back at the Sea View. That's right. You see, when you do as many models as I do, you get confused. It has nothing to do with age. I am, um, before I can go much further with this thing, there's some things I have to do before I can primer and seam and stuff. I need to get the lights in. Um, actually, I can put the lights in afterwards the way this channel is, but, uh, and so if I need to, I need, I can pull these out and put them back in again, because it's this handy channel. But I want to make sure that it's hogged out enough uh, to accept this. So I did this one already. You can see how well it fits. It lights up beautifully. Uh, we'll demonstrate that in a second. But what I want to do is, um, get rid of that little bump right there. Okay, I want to glue this together, and the way I did it, is uh, I hogged it out a little bit extra. The light fits in there pretty well. Now this is a light kit designed especially uh, for this model, which is very convenient because on mine, I didn't have that. I had to do it myself. It was before they had such a thing. So I'm just lining it up here, this little uh, opening, because uh, it will slide off and not be perfectly round like that if you're not careful. So I established that one first. And it does not take long for this to, to, uh, to melt because we're going to sand this edge all the way down uh, once we get that all closed up. Helps to have little clamps. I really think lighting up's the really neat part to do on models. And I'm just putting it right on the outside because it will just leak in there the first one I didn't even use clamps on. I just held it by hand just for a few minutes and it just, this glue is just so good. See how that does that. It doesn't really want to close all the way. You can see how beautifully it's closed here and that's just from squeezing it by hand, which we're going to do right now. I don't know if everybody uses this liquid welding uh, styrene cement. It also works good on acrylic too, as I do. Uh, but it really is the best thing to use. So that closed up pretty well, and if I'm right, I do is I twisted the ends together like that, and then I can feed this down in here. It should run all the way through and come out there. Thank you, Mobius. Thank you so much for having the forethought to put those in there, because you know how we like to light things up. Now, see, now it's giving me trouble uh, getting in there. It could be a bit of a struggle to find the right spot to avoid uh, the rubbing of the resistor. And there you go. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take these apart. I'm being twisted. Black to black, red to red, and there we got our taillights. Just like that. Really nice. Nice and bright. Should be able to see those underwater pretty well, I think. That brings me to this now. Now we've got lights in here too. I want to close the sail up, but there's some things that uh, I need to do first before I can do that. And one of those is I need to put a control arm down in here of some kind. And I could just solder something on there permanently, or did Mr. Merriman give us something we can use? that's removable. Now there's this, this has got a ball and socket on it, but I don't have another ball and socket. So what I'm doing is making my own part because I didn't see anything in the kit to, to do what I'm doing now. Uh, what I've got over here is an arm I've made out of very thin brass because that's all I have, but you know, the thin works just fine. And there's a wheel collar right here. And I'm going to what I'm doing is I'm, I'm tinning it first. So um, there we go. Now uh, I have to wait for it to all cool and then I have to sandwich this together and hit that to it and it should uh, tin that together and then well you'll see what I'm doing with this. So I'm going to position this over the hole. You'll see the part I'm trying to make. The reason that the grub screw, which by the way is stainless steel so it won't rust, is facing down because 
will be looking to the bottom of the sail, we'll actually be able to adjust it from that angle. So the idea here is to kind of sandwich this all together. It's not really pinching it all together the way I want. Hmm. Now it is, I think. Well, we'll get it nice and hot. We'll run a bead of, of this down in there and we ought to be good. We have to let it get real hot. I, really what would work really good is just to take the torch to this, but I'm too lazy. As you can see, that's heating up rather well. I'll braise it around. All right, and we're gonna run this, and turn this off. We're gonna run back over here to the water, pull it off. Sound effects are free. Yep, you can see right through it. So, with that being done, uh, and these are on, I can put this through like this very carefully, like so, and uh, I'm going to feed this inside there, he says knowingly. There it goes. That's why I made the hole oversized. Oh, look at that, what lovely alignment. Tighten this down like so. And there we go. The little the sticks out there. I've got to put a hole in it, no problem. I'll put a hole in it. Uh, that goes like that. Force fit the other one on. Like so. A little too tight. And now we've got both of them moving very smoothly and nice. And so that will be controlled from here by uh, a long shaft coming off the watertight compartment. Uh, this, what this is for here. Um, this will connect like so. The wheel collar you see here will have a, uh, it's got a screw in it there, a grip screw, it's also stainless steel. And there'll be a piece of rod going to about here that will connect to that and move it back and forth. What I want to do next is, I think, install these lights in here or see how they go in. I know, where are they? They very uh, smartly uh, did red and green. Now, we all know that green goes on this side and red goes on that side. Wrong, they actually go this way. These will be fine, I just have to bore out Wow, that was really smart using the colored tape on it because these are of the clear type and they're not the color, they're not tinted. So they're, they're not, they're not gonna light up the color they are until they're plugged in. I think is what I'm trying to say. It's late in the day and I'm a little tired, but let's see. Let's make double sure that this is red. Yes, very red. So, nice. So in order to get that in there, it looks like I'm gonna have to make a bigger hole and uh, come up to the back side. Wonderful, beautiful, amazing Mary. And her jewelry kit has reams, smaller reams. And uh, it's kind of like a really pointed file, but it does do the same thing when you do this. And so I'm gonna keep doing this till I get that to go through. This works a little faster, but then we can finish the round out on it with, uh, with the reamer. Oh, look how perfect. So theoretically, as soon as we get rid of this little lip here, there we go. This should just pop in like that. Ain't that lovely. So um, let's see, does this close it? So this has to be bent. I hate doing that, but we're gonna do it. So you always wanna bend this way. And I gotta remember that I got a shaft there, so it shouldn't get in the way too much, just like that. You can be very careful bending these, because sometimes they'll just snap. So 
That's that one. I'm going to close this up, and I want to see if I can get them in and out from the back side, even after the sail is closed, because if it is, I can do that, then I can stick these lights in after the fact and not have to put something over them. So that very slowly bend this. I hate doing that. Okay. So if this is closed, we got both lights in. Can I get up in there? Not very easily. So, and do these pop out easy? No, they don't. And I could glue them in, I could tack them in. I don't think I need to. I think they're going to stay there like that pretty well because it's a press fit, a darn good one at that. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be good. Yeah, it is. So then I guess I can close the sail up, uh, but I do need to get this inside first. So uh, we'll come back in a minute after I've closed this. So what I'm doing now is closing up the sail, and I hope I don't regret this because I think I've done everything right. Uh, so I'm gluing it shut, and it's not quite, you know, it's just not quite closing the way it should, and it's usually because of that top piece. I built enough of these to know that by now, but um, I've always wanted to make the top removable so that you could have access to stuff in here, and I may come up with something for that. I don't know. I wouldn't count on it, though. So I'm just going to seam it. It goes together really good. I mean, Mobius is pretty good at getting really tight fits on all their parts. Uh, you can see now what I've done here uh, with our little part. Now, you see how straight and even the wheel collar's on because I've got another piece of brass that fits over that piece of brass that, and the reason I did that rather than just having one piece of brass that match is because I'm matching this to what Merriman's already done. He's already bored out the holes in these sailplanes. So uh, I wanted to match that. So I just put a sleeve of the next size brass up and screw down on that. And now with this really nice motion, we got a little hole there so we can connect to this very easily and that'll hang down below the deck because we're going to, end up cutting that out. So, and that'll make, give us some reach up into there. And that's, that's just beautiful, really nice. So, uh, I can actually push it in a little bit more. Yeah, I can. So we got our lights in there. Um, I just closed this up with the glue. Now I gotta find out why this part doesn't wanna shut quite right. And I suspect that maybe it's those lights. So, uh, let's find out. No, it's, it's closing. I'll be darned. It's, it's fine. So David obviously accounted for that. So, and you see how well that snapped in there? It doesn't want to come out real easy. Magnets. Magnet there, magnet there. Then if you ever need to get in here and get to the lights, pop them out or push them back in, dude, that just fits too good. So we just put some magnets in there. And that's serviceable, and I like serviceable things like this. So it should hold it down. I mean, it really fits clean. And it's a low line there. It's not gonna be the end of the world because after all, submarine, they're full of uh, rivets and panel lines and things when you get up close on them and seams, and it would have to have a weld there anyway. So that's, that's a beautiful thing. The lights are in uh, probably tomorrow or the next time I work on this. Uh, we got the tail lights in. I'm going to be looking into how these lights go in next. Um, and this is not glued on permanently, so uh, I can get it off. But these, these are the remaining lights that go in the model. Now, I am going to add uh, some lights because I'm going to have a little bit of the interior up front so you'll be able to see something in there because we need to have room to get in here, put battery in and out, so you can't have the full interior on the um, RC version. We are back at the sea view. Got it right today. Whew, I'm a little bit more refreshed. Our movie's done, so I, I feel human again. It'll take me a few days. So I've been working on this. I did say that, right, sea view. Um, what I have done is I put a little washer that I made from aluminum, aluminum, as you folks say in the UK, and I, Cut it and slipped it over the end here and it made a nice little washer. So now I always have 
the same distance and there's no rubbing. See? Isn't that wonderful? So it's a bit far out, but that's what you have to have so it doesn't rub. Uh, in addition to that, I made two sleeves out of brass to slip over the aluminum, which now keeps this uh, equally spaced, so these do not move at all. These are solid as a rock, so we're all ready to hook up controls to this. So the next thing I did was to drill out a hole in there so that the hole goes all the way through so we can hook up the headlight. But in addition to that, I have to put the, these lights in. And you can't just stick them in these holes because they're quite large. The lenses go over here, which will eventually go on there. So what I did is took some sheet styrene, the model maker's best friend, and uh, a blade and reamed out some holes that fit just exactly so they're pressed. I don't like to glue lights in because if they burn out, you can pop them out. So, and then they will glue like so, and then we have a nice distance away from the lens and a nice even spot for them. So what I need to do is get some glue and glue in the fixture, not the light. You know, this model's a lot of fun to build because, you know, Mobius kits, they really, they do a good job. I think that's down. So now we put the other one in. Same deal, except this time I'm going to do this. Little ring of that around there and uh, wipe that off with my finger. I'm going to take a little bit of this glue and put it around here. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think that I've used Zip Kicker in the past and got it right on the LEDs and it did something to it. I can't remember. And we don't want that. So now I can stick it on there and kind of line it up and it should go off really quick. It makes it nice, neat, and clean. And now the, the LEDs are removable should, you know, they go out. I mean, you're gonna put these things into water. Um, I, my CView has not had a problem with uh, an LED uh, going out as much as it's been exposed to water because I use tool dip over all the connectors and all the, uh, the stems. And it seems to have worked quite well. We have these nice little lenses here and I figure before I go any further, I should check and make sure that they go down and do not hit the uh, LED itself. They appear that they do not. So, you know, they don't, both wires are, well, then we do it the hard way. You can't short them out by poking them up backwards. You can short them out if you short them out but not if you hook them up backwards, so I got lucky. You see how nice those are? They really, they're quite bright. Especially when you're looking straight at them, which I'll, I'll turn this a bit. You, oh, they went out, oh my God. Okay, here, there we go. See? Okay, so somehow I gotta figure out what we're gonna do with this headlight. And uh, so because we're going to need to do something similar to what, what I just did. And I think Zena just discovered her carrot. No, nope. Rosie got it. So I'm going to do this. This is how I did it. Uh, I'm going to make another little part. I get roughly in the in center. I have a good eye for center. Go like this. Break those off. Break those off. So, I'm gonna do the same thing all the way around. Because this one is, is rounded, um, the access to it. Boy, that grabs fast. And while it's still slippery, Yeah, it just makes it. Now this is something I didn't do when I built mine and I regretted it. I had problems getting this to close with the LED in it. The LED can only fit in there so far. Uh, so this one might actually end up being hot glued in a bit, but there we go. We'll let that set up a bit. Uh, 
But this is, I really like this lighting kit. And of course this one will go to the interior we spoke of, which I need to look into. Uh, but this thing is moving all around. So the glue hasn't really melted and grabbed just right yet. It will though, we won't mess with that. What I want to do is look uh, at the interior. This is the interior bag here and then look at their instructions and see what I can use of this without having to go look at mine. All right, yeah, I can see. And what I had done is I had cut away all this. I built all this here with the little structures in the bulkhead, and that was about it. Uh, because that's all you really can do if you're gonna have a watertight compartment in there and have this thing function. So that is this here. And I think what I did is I cut it from here to here. Um, it's a shame we can't do the whole thing, but we can't. And then uh, these little bulkhead girders are right here. As I recall, this goes together rather quickly. There's one bulkhead that we're gonna need to use. Really a shame to not be able to use all this, but that's the way it goes. Here's the bulkhead. This one's broken, interestingly enough. You can see it's bent. It's not how it's supposed to be. I don't think. Maybe it is. They don't show you a really good picture of it, so um, that goes here and here. No, it's not supposed to be that way, clearly. It goes like that. And then we have, I'm gonna get all the parts I'm using out of here and I gotta get Elliot's snippers. <laughs> and his silly face looking at me like this. Every time he posts something, a comment. It's got a very interesting avatar. Shot through, looks like a 15 millimeter lens. But I have to admit, these do work well. So we need these. Okay, and then these. And there's a little cross bridge, a little crop at the top of it. And this just all gets painted gray. And a little bit of silver on the hatch, as I recall. Because you really can't see well in there. Okay, those are all the parts I'm gonna use in this one right here. That is all we can put in there, approximately there. It may not be 100% straight, but it'll work good. And I can see the two marks, the three marks of Arnie Sackerson. Um, let's see. Right there. Please don't move on me. There we go. So I'm gonna trim off all this excess trim and stuff on here and assemble this. Uh, oh, there's one thing I left out and that's the, uh, there's a little railing that goes around that hatch which I have to put in. But we're gonna do all that, glue all that together and when we come back, you can see this somewhat assembled and then I'll figure out where the light's gonna go from there. It's probably gonna go up here just aiming down but I'll have to make some sort of tube or something that it fits in. So we'll be back after lunch. Welcome back. We're back at the sea view. <laughs> Trying to keep my model straight is hard. Um, and what I've done is I've hooked up all the lights. And I know you want to see them because you just love when I light things up. So um, this is the battery we talked about. That'll actually be inside the cylinder. And it's got an on-off switch on it. And uh, don't make a liar out of me, darn thing. We're going to turn it on. Here we go. Hey, I'll turn this light off. You can see that we have 
I temporarily put in the interior. Uh, I need to build a wall up to the back here and put a little door on it and stuff uh, and paint it the right colors, but you really don't see much in there. But that's all in just so I could see how well this was lighting it up. And what I want to do is diffuse that light. I really do. To spread it out more. And I'm going to do that by, by uh, sanding the top of the bulb and it kind of diffuses it and moves it out. Now we got the Cadillac taillights. And uh, we also have, I'll lift up the model so you can see it, uh, the manas underneath. They're lit up. And the headlight. And this did not come with the kit, uh, the lighting kit. And I was sort of surprised that that was left out. That little navigation light goes right here. And uh, there's a small clear part that goes over the top of that. What I did is I used one of Elliot's fine, tiny little white LEDs and put it in there. So now we have every light that the original uh, ship had. Um, I'm going to take the bottom off here before your very eyes. And I knew that would happen. Uh, the sail is permanently on. Uh, let's see if I can do it this way. No, I can't. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take off the whole top section. Because I have to uh, lock down all the, the lighting. I'll probably use hot glue and tack down the, the cables in their appropriate, appropriate locations. Um, I'm going to flip it over here. And I think I'll be able to do this without breaking everything. Seems I can. And we're going to take this apart so you can see inside here. Put that across there. Hopefully it won't fall through. OK, I should be able to lift this all off now. There we go. And uh, you can see how the lighting was done. And if you look down in here, you'll see that what I made. I made a little. Uh, bracket there at a styrene and push the bulb into it and that's what cast the light into the uh, interior. So one of the next things I have to do is uh, open up all these vents. Now you could just paint them black and that'd look great. They'd all be perfect looking and everything. But no, no. I have to drill out every one of them and open them up because they're actually functional. Uh, in a real submarine uh, you have vents and these vents uh, allow, because this, I guess, is supposed to be a, uh, this is not a dry hole submarine. This actually has a, a um, pressure hole inside. And this is open to sea, and the water floods in and out. We also have a pressure hole. So in order to get the water to come in and out of the hole easily, we need to have these vents, and they're called limber holes, opened up. So I have to drill every one of them and file them out. In addition to that, I need to make some, put some, strategic little holes in places to allow the water to come out from the top. There's nothing trapped in there. You want all the water out of the submarine, or every time you go into water and come up again, the trim's always going to be a little different because sometimes you'll have too much air trapped into here, sometimes you won't have any, and it'll drive you crazy. So you need to vent all that water. And likewise, you can see that this is completely open here. And the reason for that is so that we can get water flowing out of the sail. And again, I'm going to have to put a couple of holes in here so that the water comes out, the bubbles come out, and allow this to, uh, to dive properly and keep a proper trim. Because once you trim this and get your weight placed and your foam placed so that it sits level in the water and it's trim, and you can go underwater and come up, you don't want anything to change that. And having trapped air does do that. So uh, that will be doing that. And we're going to start doing some uh, filling uh, and sanding and painting primer on this. And basically the model is primer gray and the bottom's white. So um, I'm gonna do that and get this thing pretty much ready to put on the clear parts and we're gonna install the watertight compartment next week and hook up all the controls to get it working. And then we'll be pretty close to being done. Probably another week after that and we'll be able to put this in that fish tank there, which it fits just inside and we'll be able to see it dive and surface. Uh, and get the trim just right. And then after that, the client can come get his toy. <laughs>